Pre-draft workout number two in the books for the Sixers on Wednesday, June the 7th. Having a chance to speak with Sixers Vice President of Basketball Administration and the General Manager of the Delaware 87ers, Brandon Williams. This may be a really basic question, but how do you guys figure out who you want to bring in and when they come in for these workouts? Well, uh, starts with actually working hand in hand with the agents uh, more so this year. Uh, an increasing trend is to have pro days. You know, a lot of the agents have multiple players, five, six, ten. Uh, players and uh, you know in some cases we can double up we can see them at a pro day and see them here in some cases we can just use the pro day uh, as an opportunity to evaluate um, but once you kind of get the agents aligned on when and where they'll host them we get to build and uh, pick up all the players that we haven't seen but we've got pretty good coverage over the last couple weeks Total hypothetical, but if there's two prospects with relatively similar profiles, do you guys like seeing maybe them in the same group, how they compete against one another, how they fare against each other? Sometimes, for sure. Um, then the, the other approach is to, when you have questions, try to find ways to pair players to uh, challenge those particular things. So, um, can he guard pick and roll? Can he guard ones? Can he guard a really quick jitterbug who gets in the paint and looks to uh, score? Um, how does he guard a big that pops and can shoot to three? So rather than have two bigs that both pop to three and are really comfortable with that, um, they're guarding themselves, you know, find guys who are in some way, not necessarily opposites, but challenge each other. Um, so we, we try to be strategic in the way we put some together. Sometimes the guard workout, sometimes it's, you know, sort of cross matched uh, one, three and five. So there are lots of approaches uh, but ultimately, it's to try to solve and resolve some questions that we may have outstanding uh, from our scouting work during the season. Two of the players in the second workout group, a duo from the Oregon Ducks in Tyler Dorsey and Jordan Bell. They had a terrific run of the Final Four. How much does that catch your attention when a team goes on a late run and then what some of the players do during that? Um, you know, would love to say it, it doesn't move you because you're always objective, but I think uh, it's an emotional business. Um, the, the most important piece is is just respecting winning. Um, any program that wins, as hard as it is to, to put a team together, uh, for guys to stay aligned and focused on a goal, uh, to stay healthy, uh, but keep executing, particularly late when things get really challenging, right? The pressure builds. So um, you have to respect teams that go on a run, uh, especially when there's no fluke. You know, it wasn't because of a series of injuries to the other team. Uh, but these guys have, uh, they come from a really strong program that's proven to be uh, one of the elite uh, programs over the last several years. Um, you have to respect, you know, the, the work consistently in the off season to sort of build themselves, build their bodies. And those are the kind of things that we're focused on here. Dorsey, a player certainly that has shown he can shoot the ball pretty well. But as we see in games at any level, shots can come and go. So whether or not a player, let's say, is on fire in a workout or maybe doesn't have it that day, in general, how do you guys look at something like shooting for the workouts? Uh, I think it's the quality of the shot, uh, the types of shot. You, 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 also, you always want players with high IQ, and that comes in playmaking for others. It comes in reading screens, um, how effective is he at using his other players. Uh, great shooter doesn't get as open if his big guy is always getting offensive fouls for leaving too early. Uh, so there are things that you can read about a way the way players get their shots um, and their willingness to recognize the other players. Like I can get hot, but I also have to. There are other guys here showcasing. I've, I've got to sort of build and keep chemistry with players on the floor. So lots to learn um, whether the shot goes in or not, uh, and whether ten go in in a row. Thomas Bryant a big man out of Indiana, and certainly it seemed like he had a lot of energy out there on the court today. How much does that stand out? Um, you got to love the energy. I mean, you really, the gym is a, it's a huge space. I mean, this is what we do for a living. We spend time in the gym. It's our place to have fun. I mean, this is serious work. But at the end of the day, they're playing basketball, and to see how much he enjoys it um, gets other guys fired up. I mean, certainly that kind of personality helps in the summertime uh, when – uh, you don't have the, the natural enthusiasm of games coming. Uh, and it's uh, something that appears to be consistent. I mean, we've now seen him several times, and he's, uh, I mean, he's, uh, he's yapping and he's talking trash, but he's also laughing, and other guys are, are enjoying being with him. So I appreciate that uh, because that can often get lost and, and sometimes go too far. 
on this side, the media side, you look at a story like Steve's story and you're like, all right, local kid, St. Joseph's Prep, had a great run, terrific at Notre Dame. Do you guys as executives, evaluators, enjoy learning about some of these guys in the same ways, hearing their stories? Yeah, you know, he um, is another one, like you respect the winning. Uh, and we have you know, got a lot of experience with that program. They've had some high-level players coming out over the last several drafts and watching uh, his evolution as a player. There, there are years that you count as better in one particular area. He shot it better when he had a, you know, another point guard who could create in Demetrius Jackson. And then taking on more of the load uh, this year changes the way that he approaches. But a local guy that um, y you like having people like that in the building. One, there's the attention that media shows. Uh, so you can imagine, should he make the team or be in some way attached to the program, you know, how many local folks might, you know, re-engage, uh, further engage with the Sixers or with our program just because of, you know, his personality and, and his roots. Um, but, you know, guys like that, we, we cheer on as much as we evaluate because, you know, knowing what the mocks look like, aside from our mocks, it's going to be a challenging road for a lot of guys that were in this in this building. And uh, we, we know that in the end, tough and focused and committed players will be left standing, and he seems to be made of the right stuff. Ella Frank Okobo, how did he come on the Sixers radar? Um, always, always scouting. You know, uh, the international work does not get as much attention as the domestic, primarily because of the attention on the NCAA. But we've got uh, good people combing the globe. Uh, some of us travel internationally once we get a heads up. Um, he's done well as a junior player. Uh, someone that may still have a road ahead of him in Europe. You know, every player drafted, as you know, does not, you know, make their way to the roster immediately. So what options are there for some of the players we pick to continue to develop and grow and play at a high level? Uh, so he's uh, another one of those such players. Um, was impressive today, you know, ability to play two positions, uh, shoot the ball, attack off the dribble, uh, create for others you know, continue work and pick and roll and playing with the kind of space that you see here. And probably the biggest challenge, because one of the largest differences is the defensive side of the ball, being able to guard in space. And I think those are certainly, without being close to him, uh, going to be in his development future. Last thing before we wrap this up, we've now seen in two days' worth of workouts, good number of current Sixers in the gym, even Furkan Korkmaz showing up on Wednesday. How cool has that been? Yeah, how about that? You know, it's good to see our family coming together. I mean, we draft uh, players, um, and there's always been a question, when when will you see them? You know, the, the mystery of it all. But, you know, what we're starting to understand is the culture uh, of the Sixers is uh, becoming notorious. And so in Furkan's case, the first thing is before we get to any more high-level decisions, I just want to be in the, in the group. I want to be there developing. The guys are going to do some fun stuff today, you know, bonding. And he'll be a part of that. So that's awesome for him. He's, he's all smiles. Uh, and I think he's really looking forward to spending time with the coaches and the players working on his game. Hard-working man during a hard-working time. Brandon, thanks so much. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Brian.